Today we're going to talk about all things clam chowder. Here we have a few cherry stone clams, which are the basis of any good chowder. If you're on the East Coast, you might be using quahogs, which are even larger than cherry stones. So first step when you get the clams is you want to run them under a cold tap and with the help of a brush, just sort of clear any debris or sand that might be on the shelves themselves. And then the next thing you're going to do is pat them dry a little bit and then throw them in the freezer for about two hours. And what that will do is kill the clams and it will make them far easier to open. And so what you want to do is now, you find the, the uh, seam between the two shells and then with your four outstretched fingers, just apply pressure to the clam like that. And once you've reached about a third of the way into the clam, you can, you'll be sure that you've cut that adductor muscle. And if you can see, there's already juice running down the back of my hand. And this is exactly what we want. This is the juice that is going to make the clam chowder um, rich and flavorful and give it that essence of the sea that we're looking for. So now that I've got both adductor muscles cut, I can open the clam like this. And you'll see you have a beautiful, beautiful clam, tons of meat in there. And there you've got a beautiful whole shocked cherry stone. And the recipe we call for about three and a half pounds of live clams. Part of what makes, makes these recipes um, a, a bit different is the fact that I suggest you make the soup today and eat it tomorrow. Uh, you'll find that by letting the soup sit overnight in your refrigerator, it'll build flavor it will, it will uh, taste far better tomorrow than it does today. In order to make that easier, what we're gonna do is separate the clam meat from the clam juice, and we're going to chop the clams. What we're doing here is just sort of breaking them down into smaller pieces so that um, they'll sort of, um, you know, sit nicely on your spoon when you're eating the chowder. And then once we have the clams chopped, we'll just take them, we'll put them in a bowl or in a plastic container, we'll cover them up and we'll put them in the refrigerator and they will join the chowder tomorrow. In order to prepare the clam juice for the, um, for the chowder, all we need to do is strain it through a fine mesh sieve like this. The sieve will catch the majority of the silt or sand uh, or impurities that might be in there, but all the while you're sort of watching the liquid as it passes out of the bowl, and it'll get to a point where there's just lots of sand usually or, and lots of silt, and at that point you stop. So Rhode Island Clear doesn't contain any cream at all. So yes, it's a, a chowder that hails from New England, but it, it doesn't have the traditional attributes of a New England clam chowder, which is normally, you know, a thick, creamy sort of chowder. Rhode Island Clear, nothing like that. It's very simple. All the ingredients that you'll need are right here in front of me. We have onions, we have salt pork, we have butter, we have potatoes. Other than that, obviously the only thing you need is clams, which we've already shucked. This is all you need. I suggest you use a stainless steel pot. If you don't have a stainless steel pot, enameled cast iron is also a very good choice. Uh, the reason you want to do that is because you don't want the potatoes to, to discolor as they would in an aluminum pan. So first ingredient we're going to add to the pan is butter. Second is the salt pork. So salt pork um, is, is um, you know, sort of different from bacon in the sense that um, it is not smoked. It's only salted. So as you can see now, the, the uh, salt pork is starting to render. And uh, this is very important. What you wanna do is bring the fat out of the salt pork, but you don't wanna brown the salt pork at all. Salt pork, uh, it's aptly named because it is very, very salty um, when you first buy it. And so you need to rinse the majority of the salt off of it. Uh, if you don't, you'll find your chowder might wind up to be a little bit salty. These are just white onions, sort of a large dice. And what we wanna do is just sort of sweat them down until they're translucent in the pork fat. You know, in order to ensure that your soup is not too salty, you're gonna to wanna to reserve uh, any seasoning until the very, very end. What we, want, we need to do at this point is cook these onions down for a good, uh, probably five minutes. You wanna pay very close attention uh, during the time that they're in the pan before you add any liquid. You wanna pay very close attention, be sure that they don't brown. Now you can sort of start to see that the onions, the onions are becoming translucent, but we still got a ways to go. You're not gonna eat this soup until tomorrow anyway, so what's the point of rushing now? So now we're at the point where um, the onions have cooked for quite a while with the salt pork and they are uh, they're translucent. And so now we're at the point where we can add the clam juice. Now that we've added the clam broth, we can add the potatoes. These are just Idaho russet potatoes and we're going to add them to the broth. As the potatoes cook, they will release starch and that starch will serve to thicken the soup. Once you've made the clear uh, Rhode Island chowder, 
the recipe calls for to make the New England uh, uh, taking a portion of the uh, Rhode Island Clear and adding creme double, which is reduced cream. So creme double couldn't be easier to make. All you're going to do is take heavy cream, uh, pour it into a pan. Uh, you can add a little pinch of salt right at the beginning, which will help from scorching. And then uh, you put that cream on the fire and reduce it down till half of it has reduced away. And for every, say, six ounces of the soup itself, you're going to add two ounces of creme double or double cream and two ounces of chopped clam. And you're done. Couldn't be any easier. The second chowder we're going to make today is the um, Manhattan style clam chowder, as I call it the Lindenhurst style clam chowder. And I call it Lindenhurst because um, this is sort of based on a recipe that my grandmother used to make, and she uh, was, as far as I knew her, always lived in Lindenhurst, Long Island, which is, um, which is where probably it's the first time I ever had Manhattan-style clam chowder. Uh, you can see there's a lot more ingredients to this soup. It's a little bit more complicated, but it has, you know, all the, in terms of the way you handle the clams and the way the clams find their way into the soup, we're going to do everything exactly the same. So we're going to start out today with uh, the salt pork again. We're going to add pancetta. Which is, uh, you know, which is a, basically it's a, it's a cured pork belly, but it, again, it's not smoked. We're gonna sweat those two um, types of pork out in just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. So now the, the pancetta and the salt pork have sort of rendered a bit. They're not browning, however. And then we're gonna start to add the rest of our ingredients. So we'll start with the onions, carrots, and celery. We'll let those cook down for a little bit. A little bit. We're also going to add at this point the chili flake and you can add the Anaheim peppers or the chopped jalapeno. Uh, we don't want this to be a spicy soup, but a little, maybe just a little hint of spiciness, but not, you know, not something where you take a bite and begin to sweat. So what we want to do now is sweat all of these ingredients together in the fat from the salt pork and the pancetta. The soup is done and it's ready to be cooled uh, when the potatoes are tender. And uh, once the potatoes are tender, as I said before, what you're going to do is uh, take the soup off the fire, put, put the soup in a, over ice, uh, cool it down as quickly as you can, and then hold it overnight in your refrigerator. The onions, carrots, and celery have had a chance to sweat for a good five or so minutes. And at this point, I'm going to add a bouquet garni, which is just bay leaf and thyme, the chopped garlic. And then we're gonna return this to the fire just until the garlic becomes aromatic. So now we're at a point where all the ingredients um, are tender, they've, they're all translucent, uh, and they've been cooked well without browning. So now what we're gonna do is move on to the next step, which is adding some white wine. We wanna put that, put it, once we've added the white wine, we're gonna put the pan back on the fire and cook the alcohol out of the wine for uh, just a couple of minutes, reduce it a little bit so that we have sort of a sweet flavor of the white wine and we don't trap that raw, uncooked, alcoholic flavor of the white wine in the soup. Okay, so now that our white wine is cooked down for a moment, we can move on to the rest of the ingredients. So now we have the San Marzano tomatoes that we're going to add to the pan. We have our clam juice from the freshly shucked clams. And finally, we have our potatoes. Now these potatoes, you'll notice, are different from the potatoes we used in the last soup. These are actually Russian banana fingerlings from uh, Alex Weiser of Weiser Farms. And then just as we did with the Rhode Island Clear, the, the final step here is to just simmer the soup gently until the potatoes are thoroughly cooked. Okay, so now we can move on to the final step for both of them. They've sat overnight in our refrigerator, and now I'm gonna show you how you wanna prepare them for the table. Eight ounces per guest. So you want to get a nice mix of broth and potato. And at this point, don't forget, there's still no clams in the clam chowder. It's only um, clam juice. All right, so here we have enough chowder for four servings of Rhode Island Clear. All right, so that will be for our New England. This is our Rhode Island Clear. And then we have to do the, the final of the three soups, which is the Lindenhurst style, which is right here, the Manhattan style clam chowder. What I suggest you do is you bring the soup up to temperature first um, before you add the clams, give them a taste, and then we'll add the clams just in the last second, right before, they, right before you're ready to serve them to the guest. Now, in the case of the New England style clam chowder, you've got to add the, creme, the reduced cream or the creme double. So what I'm suggesting is that 
for every uh, eight ounce bowl of, um, of New England clam chowder you want to serve, you add about two ounces of the reduced cream. So we can just do that now while the soup is heating. Everything up to temperature together at once. The clear chowder and the Manhattan style chowder, we only need to bring them up to temperature, taste them, and then add the clams right at the last moment. So let's go ahead and taste everything. Tastes good, the seasoning is correct. These are our chopped clams um, that we put in the refrigerator yesterday. So add, you know, maybe a good heaping tablespoon or two of clam for each, each portion of soup that we plan to serve. Once you add the clams to these soups, even though they were, they're all three based on clam broth, when you add that, that, the clams at just the last moment, you'll, you, all of a sudden the, the, the flavor of the clam just sort of ramps up inside the soup. And the soup sort of like really transforms just at the last moment, which is exactly why we want to add the clams right before serving it. So that when you get the, these chowders in front of you, the predominant flavor is really uh, that fresh, lovely flavor of clam. Okay, so the Manhattan style chowder is ready to serve, so we'll go ahead and, and finish that up. When you're, when you're portioning these out, make sure you have a good amount of vegetables in there. Some of the lovely, um, the clams obviously, and a good amount of the broth. I'll finish it off like that. So then to finish the, uh, the Manhattan style chowder, we're gonna add just a little touch of extra virgin olive oil in each bowl. And then because this is something that I remember from my grandmother when she used to make uh, her soups, whether it was chicken soup or Manhattan style clam chowder, she would always reserve the tender little leaves of the, um, from the celery. Um, and so that's how we're gonna finish off the Manhattan style clam chowder. And then I would just bring it to, our, to my guests and serve it immediately, piping hot. So now we're gonna finish the Rhode Island clear. So same technique here. The soup is already hot, pretty much ready for the table. At the last moment now, stir in the clams. All right, so now the soup's ready for the table. Just very simple. You see bacon, you see onion, and you see potato, and that's all it is. And of course, clam. This is just the clear, uh, Rhode Island clear base that we've added the reduced cream to. And then I'm gonna finish it off with the rest of my chopped clams. Stir those in, let them cook for a minute or so. The white chowder's done now, and then we'll go ahead and plate that up. So we have a couple of garnishes as well for the soups. The Rhode Island Clear, I like to garnish with just a little pinch of uh, cayenne pepper and some chopped chives. If you're up in New England, in some places, uh, if you order a traditional New England uh, chowder at the very last second, right before they send it out of the kitchen, they'll add just a little pat of butter. Uh, it is absolutely delicious. There we have it, we have the Manhattan style chowder. The Rhode Island Clear and the traditional New England.